Twitch has just made it a lot easier for idiots and racists and homophobic people to find their outlet to be racist and homophobic. And of course, transphobic. Twitch tags. 350 Twitch tags are going to be arriving to Twitch this week. So that's obviously a good thing, right? Discoverability. People have been begging for this for years and years on Twitch. Better way for people to be able to search for and find content that's more appropriate to them. And also a way for smaller streamers to get discovered. That's a good thing. Well, maybe not actually, because some of the tags that they're thinking of doing could be used badly. Actually, some people are suggesting it's going as far as saying it's racial profiling. This has really divided the Twitch community. And in this video, we're going to discuss the tags in a little bit more detail what they're for how they should be used what's the rules around tags i'll show you what they look like on mobile versus what they look like on desktop we'll do a comparison with twitch versus youtube in terms of discoverability we won't be going into a great deal of depth about the discoverability differences because i'm going to save that for another video where i do go into a lot more depth but we'll just scratch the surface a little bit on that we'll talk a little bit about how twitch are planning to police those tags and then of course we're going to deal with the controversial issue of whether or not this is racial profiling and how this is going to work in terms of of just being fair and reasonable and hopefully to avoid the trolls and things like that. As always as well, I'm going to show the reaction that we've seen. Man, the reactions on Reddit, it's always so funny. It's like every single time Twitch make a change, it's the apocalypse. That's what happens on live stream fails. It's kind of funny to watch as a bystander. So hello, I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. Welcome to the video. I hope you enjoy the discussion here all around tags and what they're used for. Please leave your feedback in the comments below. I want to know what your thoughts and feelings are about this, the good things and bad things. I also did a poll about this and I've not looked at the results of that poll. So I'm going to show the results of that poll within this video as well. Also, if you do find it useful or if you just want to help me out, hit the like below. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and check me out at twitch.tv forward slash Machine Dana. Let's do this. So this all started really the discussion around tags and things like that. It's been going for a long, long time. And obviously people have been moaning about poor discoverability on Twitch for a long time now. I do think Twitch have done some things to improve discoverability. For example, boosting streams is a recent innovation that they've tested. They've also improved things via having like a video about us section. So you can upload an intro video to your channel. And there's a load of other things that they've done. And obviously just the introduction itself of having tags was an improvement to discoverability. But more recently, hot tub streamers, primarily people like Amaranth, kind of hit the Twitch headlines a little bit because they are forced really to stream in the just chatting page because technically they are just chatting. But is it enough for Twitch to allow people to just have a just chatting page when maybe perhaps people don't want to be having suggested content from the just chatting page when it's naked girls doing what they do and therefore a new category was needed. So on May 21st, Twitch tweeted about this and they've basically now got a new category called called pools, hot tubs, and beaches. So now these streamers can basically stream into that category. So now if you're a man or a woman that wants to stream from a bathtub or a sink or a hot tub or a beach or a pool, basically, if you want to get your skin out, you can do that, but you've got to do it in this category and you can leave the just chatting for, you know, clothed people. Fine. I never really saw much of a problem with this, but I think it was also causing issues with advertising. Advertisers get quite a lot of control over who they advertise on and what categories and various things like that. So if many streamers and the best advertisable, most advertiser friendly streamers are in the just chatting page, but then you've also got like half naked streamers that are also in those same categories creating content that basically like muddies the water in terms of how advertiser friendly the just chatting section is. So that's where we are with this. This has kind of sort of started the conversation. It's been a catalyst for the conversation. Thankfully here Twitch as well said here, being found to be sexy by others is not against the rules. I was really relieved to see this because man, I've been worried about this for a long time. So fast forward a day or two later, 22nd of May, Twitch released this. We plan to share this next week, but we've heard a lot of you talk. We want to make sure the record is clear. Next week, we'll be adding 350 new tags to celebrate yourself and your community. Now, that all seems kind of fine, doesn't it? Healthy. The problem is they then follow up with this. We'll have tags related to gender, sexual orientation, race, nationality, ability, mental health, and more. Now, most of these are fairly benign, but certain things, particularly mental health, you could argue, but certainly race, sexual orientation, 
orientation or, or even gender, these could all be viewed as dimly and negatively by some people. Some people could potentially be offended by this, and I do really get that. We're going to get into the discussion about this a little bit later in the video. They then follow this up with a blog post within the same tweet, celebrating yourself and your community with 350 new taxes. There's a lot more detail, and I'll link all of these posts below so you can read them yourself. They're really careful within this to talk about hateful conduct and harassment policies, so they're clearly already aware that this could potentially create some issues with harassment and hateful policy. They also follow up to say on the 26th of May, a few days later, they'll be doing a talk about this to address the issues. So perhaps this video is a little bit early. So briefly, what are tags? Well, tags are used to describe a live stream beyond the game or category being broadcast. It just gives a little bit more context for any viewers to be able to filter down the content that they're specifically looking for in case a streamer has chosen to add those tags to their description. Now you can do this within the broadcasting software, for example, within OBS Studio. I'll show you right now. On the right hand side here, I can update the tags within this section here, but you can also do it within your stream manager by editing stream information and editing the tag section in here. And some of the tags are also tied to the game that you're playing. For example, strategy and simulation and 4X are tags that have been auto applied to Civilization 6. So this is what the tags look like on desktop. And you'll see actually quite a lot of the bigger streamers. In this case, we're looking at Tifu. He's a top 20 streamer. A lot of people just don't use the tags because a lot of people have viewed them as basically useless for a long time. And this is what it looks like on mobile as you can see and for those that are interested there's actually a list of all tags here again i'll link this in the description below but it's twitch.tv forward slash directory forward slash all forward slash tags and these are kind of segmented into stream category and automatic tags for example if we click on automatic It'll remove these two here and we'll leave just the stream tags. So that's pretty useful. Twitch are actually helping people to better understand what's available to them here. But I'm not sure this is really enough. Hopefully they come up with some sort of algorithm that suggests certain tags based on your own history, but also suggested based on other people in similar categories to you. Now at the moment, the new tags are not listed on this section. But within the next few days, by the time the new tags go live, this list almost certainly will be updated. So you can browse this and check what tags you may want to use yourself including the race ones, gender ones, and all the other controversial ones as well. So if you got this far into the video, you're probably wondering why I'm even doing this content. Well, up until now, all I've really done is show you a little bit about how the tags work, what they are, and so on. The thing is, there's kind of a wider, more important discussion to have here about discoverability, but the trade-off between discoverability and making sure that people are not offended, people are not harassed, trolled, or even more sinister things that can happen through streaming. For example, stalking, swatting, and various other things. I'm a huge advocate of keeping a strong mental health and taking time out for yourself. And Twitch and social media is notorious for causing mental health issues with people. Taking a break's really important, but if you come back and you're getting trolled or harassed or whatever, it can obviously be very demoralizing. And in very extreme cases, has caused people to literally commit suicide. This is a very serious thing. This happened recently when high profile streamer Wreckful sadly passed away through suicide and the whole community was kind of hit hard by the realization that we do need to take things a little bit more seriously. And perhaps this is part of where Twitch's rationale is coming from. But the problem is by trying to solve and help some of these issues along, including Black Lives Matter, including inclusiveness across the board, sexuality, race, gender, they may have actually made the situation worse potentially, or at least in the short term, until they refine how this works. And this is really the detail and crux of the discussion that I wanted to engage in here with people. So why the caution and why the concern? Well, the thing is being able to categorize yourself by a gender or a race or a sexual orientation, whilst that is your free will and choice to do that because you obviously have the option to not use these tags, people also then have the free will as to whether or not they will search for people based on those those tags as well. So the viewer's got just as much free will as the streamer does. And in most cases, if you get a better match between the viewer that wants to view and engage with similar like-minded communities to theirs and streamers that also want like-minded viewers, that's a good thing. Can't argue that to be a bad thing until you get to the minority of idiots that then want to use that to leverage trolling and more sinister things. So picture this scenario. If you've got a racist person that wants to sort tags by a particular race that he does not 
like. Twitch has just made it a lot easier for idiots and racists and homophobic people to find their outlet to be racist and homophobic. And of course, transphobic. And this is really the crux of where the problem comes. And I'm sure that Twitch will have to tweak the system to try and implement something that will protect communities and perhaps minorities that need that extra level of protection and just oversight. Because although individually any one of these groups on their own might not amount to a lot of people, collectively each of these communities amount to a lot of people. And even if it didn't amount to a lot of people, Twitch still has to be a safe place for a streamer to go to stream and viewers to go to watch. And that's really important to Twitch as a platform, but it's also important to the viewers' well-being and also the streamers' well-being. And also the advertisers are not going to want to be advertising on platforms that are regarded as toxic. So Twitch are really treading this tightrope here of trying to get it right, but potentially getting it wrong. The thing is, Twitch does need to improve discoverability, and that means that they do need to try new things. They do need to innovate, and they do need to bring more metadata to the searching process and the matching process and the algorithm process. At the moment, really all Twitch has got to work with is a few key sets of data. They've got a title, which will have keywords in it. They will have potentially a notification that will be sent to your followers as you go live, which they're probably not scraping for keywords, but they could. It's not known that that's used for keyword and metadata. On top of that, you've got a few basic tags that are currently available, but they're not very good. Not many people use them, and certainly people don't tend to take them seriously. Beyond that, really, it's all about how many followers and what the view time is as to whether or not the algorithm suggests someone's content or not. And that turns it more into a popularity contest rather than an algorithmic, metadata, meta-driven, intelligent matching process. And that is something that YouTube does currently have and has had for a long time time now. Just to illustrate what this looks for anyone that doesn't know, on the back end of YouTube, here are all the bits of data that can be used in meta context for discoverability. We've got the title. Obviously, we've got a lot of room for description here, up to 5,000 characters. You can add things to playlists. And then on top of that, you've got up to 500 characters that you can use for keywords that you define. So this is fully user-friendly and fully metadata driven. And then on top of that, you've got things like age-related content, location-related content and even stuff to do with license and distribution too. And then on top of that, YouTube also has the other analytics data like how long someone's watching the video, how many people bounce away, how many click-throughs and impressions and a load of other stats like that. Twitch doesn't have all of that, so they do need to do something to stay competitive. But at the same time, they may be risking some integrity here and, of course, the well-being of certain sections of people inadvertently, which is obviously a bad thing. So, Let's talk about this for a second. I don't think it's an accident that Twitch have put out that tweet a week earlier than they're planning to release it. Normally, Twitch don't do that. So I feel like they're being very cautious with this. And maybe what's happened is they've been sat in a boardroom and someone somewhere has just gone, uh, guys, can I just... Um Maybe we should put out like a Beeler tweet first before we put out the actual tags themselves. So my feeling is we may end up getting a much more rationalized version of those tags first, wherein Twitch will then be able to gauge the feedback and then improve on it and iterate upon it. One issue here is that Twitch is going to have a problem on how far they take this in terms of how granular they make those tags. Because in the process of adding more options for people to be able to loud and proud and tag themselves up, want to match themselves with like-minded communities of theirs, they may also be excluding communities that are not included in those tags. And even if those communities only have a very small number of people within them, those people could feel left out and they're at risk of being alienated by Twitch. So of course, the tag list is there to be improved and iterated upon. One thing that is pretty cool about this is that Twitch do have a tags and categories suggestion form. So there is an outlet for people that believe that they're being left out as part of the tags. And I'm guessing that if tags get enough traction or enough people People shouting about them that they will add those tags as well but we risk at this point getting into a situation where it's basically just the same as YouTube's tag system and it should just be fully customizable and there's an argument to say that maybe they should just do this anyway because it's worked for YouTube and it's given YouTube a lot more to work with and it's refined YouTube's algorithm over the years now one of the issues here is the abuse of the tags for example what used to happen with YouTube is people would put the PewDiePie tag always in their video and that would mean that they would sort of almost like false hook some extra views and even if some of those viewers were not that interested in the content they would still get more views and it would look good for the statistics but the thing is about that and the counter argument is if 
the content isn't suitable for the person looking for it, that in itself is a sign because that person bounces away quickly. It's a sign that the tags are being abused. So just by having tags there does allow Twitch to be able to identify more clearly through algorithmic systematic AI when and where people are abusing the tags. So that's a legitimate concern about the abuse of the tags. But at the same time, it's also something that I think Twitch will be able to resolve in due course. So I'm really keen to know what you guys think about this. Please let me know in the comments, you know, whether you think this is a good idea or a bad idea. Let me know, you know, what tags you think should and shouldn't be included here. What should the feedback process look like for Twitch? Is it good enough that they're just putting these things out on Twitter? Or should they be a little bit more cross-platform and cautious about the way that they communicate these things? Perhaps they should have done some communication and canvassing with the community before they even drew up this list. And maybe they did, but it might have been a much smaller subset of Twitch viewers rather than en masse. I said I did a poll about this on my YouTube channel. I said I would show the results of this. Now, this poll has only been running for 20 hours. It's probably going to get a lot more votes in due course, but overall, most people think it's a good thing. At this point, 80% of people have said that it's a good thing. The thing about Twitch is people, especially on Twitter, will find any excuse to be dramatic with Twitch. Any slight movement and change, because Twitch are catering to so many millions of streamers, it's something like 10 million streamers or something like that, and then 200 million viewers, so many people want to chime in with their opinions, you're never going to cater for everyone fully with the changes that they make. And I'm not just talking about tags here, discoverability. I'm talking about any change across Twitch. The reality is here, Twitch are trying to make improvements. They are trying to improve discoverability. And literally, people have been begging for this for years and years. Now, finally, Twitch do something about it and everyone's really, really critical about it. And we'll get into what some of those critiques are. By the way, I also did a quick poll on Twitter as well. Uh, it's only been live for a couple of hours and two thirds of people so far have said that it will be successful. So here's the post on live stream fails that I wanted to just show here. Twitch's brand new, totally not racist feature, race tags. I think this is a little bit unfair because whoever's done this post here, they've obviously framed this in a way that already almost leads the community down the line of saying this is racist. The reality is here, this is a very leading post that they've put there. It's not very unbiased. 4.8 thousand comments and 33,000 upvotes. People asking, is it satire? People sort of taking the mickey a little bit, for example, soda popping just went live. Why? depressed. I mean, I sort of see the humor in it, but Game and Hike here seems to be excited about just the prospect of seeing all this drama unfold. I don't really appreciate people like this. And, and I, you know, I enjoy a joke at the best of time. But if you're just like lapping up other people's misery, it's just not a good way to be. It's not a good way of living. Woke views will be mad that some obscure gender ethnicity will be missing. Well, OK, you, you make a valid point, but I don't know why you're enjoying that prospect. Regular views will be mad because they've implemented identity tags before content tags. That's not even valid because because content tags have been there for so long now already. White streams would be mad because it's clearly designed to boost other people with a zero sum server. The thing is, it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, male, female, trans, gay, straight, it, it really doesn't matter. Twitch in itself is a little bit like a zero sum server. You get people that struggle in all categories. I don't think it's necessarily any one of those particular communities that, that are less popular than others naturally. This is an interesting comment by Twitch TV leadly. He says, good job. You've gone so far trying to avoid racism that you've created racism. Has he got a point here or not? I think in the short term, this is going to cause a lot of problems. But I think in the long term, it's going to be a much better thing. Even if you get small subsets of idiot trolls that plan to now use this negatively for harassment or worse, they will be weeded out a lot more quicker and Twitch will come down very hard on those people. They will have a team of people that will deal with this. And it won't take long for Twitch to develop this into a situation where those people can be identified very quickly and dealt with and wiped off the face of Twitch. I'd personally feel a little bit more comfortable here if I was more comfortable with the banning process for Twitch. Currently, it's too easy for someone to just set up a new account with a new email address, go onto Twitch and be racist or be a person that harasses. But thankfully, in the majority, that is not the case. It's only a very small percentage of people that do that. And also, thankfully, most communities are strong enough to chastise them and they have good mods that will instantly get rid of them too. And this is part of the issue with Twitch is that self-modding is a thing here. You can choose to moderate this how you want, even to the point where you can choose as a streamer, do I want these tags or do I not want these tags? It is free 
will. I would strongly argue that this is not a move that will create more racism. I think that Twitch are just giving people more option and allowing similar like-minded communities to connect with each other and build friendships. I think of an example of perhaps somebody that might search on a tag, end up making a really good new friend that might become in real life like a partner to them or even they might get married or something like that through perhaps a Twitch tag. And if that can happen as a result of a Twitch tag, that's a really good thing. They're directly enabling more stronger connections to be made. It just cannot be the, at the expense of the well-being of the streamer and the other viewers if then racism and homophobia and stuff like that are allowed to happen. So Twitch does need to tread carefully on this. Let me know what you think. This isn't my usual type of content. Take care, have a good day, and be well.